PhD in D again here on YouTube coming at you this time with the second installment in a series of how to DM Epic Tier D and D. This pertains mostly to fourth edition, but these tips can be taken um, and used in a wide variety of games, things like that. So it's taken me about two and a half months to move forth with this video, and I apologize for that. I think. January 3rd is when I put out the first one in the series, so I do plan on finishing this as well as some of the other series. Things are just getting a little crazy, trying to get it back on track. So, DMing, Epic Tier D&D, Part 2, Part 1, check it out. Uh, I talked a little bit about how to prepare for the game, how to actually prepare the table as well, and just kind of your mindset um, to do with that. So, storylines is what I'm going to dive into right now. You're in Epic Tier... D and D, uh, whether it's fourth edition, whatever, you're at the high, you know, the beyond the normal tier. You're at in fourth edition, it's between levels twenty one and thirty, and you're no longer fighting goblins. And even you know, worldly matters really don't seem to hold a lot of weight anymore. What I mean by that is your storylines when you get to epic tier need to be they need to be consistent with what you've set before. And what I mean by that is, you know, you've got all these great stories that you've probably had throughout your game leading up to the epic tier. Don't throw them away just to try to ramp things up for, you know, the epic tier. Don't try to change and have completely different stories or just say, okay, well, at epic tier D&D, I can't, you know, the matters of kings and queens... That doesn't matter anymore. Now it's we got to get into godly things. They're fighting gods, demons, and so on. Don't necessarily make that jump. You do need to have epic tier stories and epic things where they're not always dealing with kings and queens and smaller worldly matters. But keep a hold of those stories that you've you know you've worked on up to this point, and the players have kind of worked out to this point, and flow them right into Epic Tier. So find a way to kind of link that. Otherwise, those stories essentially mean nothing if you're just throwing them away. So find a way to move that in. And an example would be in what, in my longest-running game right now. The guys had a lot of wars uh, on the planet, or on in the fold is what it's called. You know, there were wars between countries. There's a threat. Uh, there's always been this overlooming threat uh, from one guy building a weapon. There's all these things that they used to think were important, and they were, but as they get into the epic tier, they're starting to understand and see themes that are bigger and greater than before. So they're starting to see that they're, they're now understanding that bigger things were always at work. This was, you know, certain gods vying for power, through the actions of people they'd encountered so far. So these enemies that they thought they had before, and these villains, turned out to just be pawns for, you know, something much greater. And so it's really cool to see these themes evolve into something much bigger. If you look at, uh, off the top of my head, I can think of, like, George Martin's series. I think it's a Song of Ice and Fire, one of those. Fire and Ice, Ice and Fire. But if you really take a step back and look... At, and I'm not going to do any spoilers, I haven't even finished the second book yet, but if you take a step back and look at the overall themes, uh, you can see something much greater than just families fighting. There's something bigger at work there. And so that's kind of how you have to shift those stories into Epic Tier. Don't throw them away, don't just come up with all new stories, but you know, make it in such a way that they become that much more important now. And they start to realize, you know, they were looking at it all wrong before. Um, something like that. Just don't throw away your stories. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, keeping things epic and turning on all cylinders, as I call it. So epic means, obviously, you can't just throw out a pack of goblins. You can't have them go try to raid a cave for a bunch of goblins that are a pain in the butt. You have to have, or you should have, bigger things like demons, uh, demigods. They're fighting angels now. Things like that. And turning on all cylinders, I mean, this should be at any stage of the game. If they're not doing something in place A, over here, if they're over at town B and working on this problem, whatever's going on at A still needs to go on and happen. 
there needs to be, at Epic Tier especially, there needs to be, you know, a living world where things are going on without them. They have to make the hard choices. Like, okay, if we don't go here, something bad could happen. But if we don't go here right now, something bad's going to happen there. They have to make these moral decisions, and that's what makes it so awesome at Epic Tier. So keep everything moving everywhere in the world. Character story arcs also need to start to come to a close. And this is one of the biggest things that I would stress. They need to, you know, you need to know the personal backgrounds of stories and start to make those things, you know, come full circle. And that's kind of what I meant to say with the overall plot. Things are starting to come full circle. They're starting to understand it. We'll take that also with these individual characters' backgrounds and stories and things that they've wanted to accomplish and start to make those come to a close as well. Maybe it has nothing to do with some of the main storylines or story arc, but that's fine. You know, like I said, they've got to make decisions and give them the opportunities for those personal story arcs to come to a close. Now, jumping straight into encounters and how to do things with encounters, I'll go over this briefly, but you need to use terrain and different environments or environmental effects. And use cool terrain, meaning don't just have a flat battlefield with nothing. You know, have hills, have, you know, pits of fire, acid, have something crazy that they can swing on, climb on. These guys can fly usually at epic tier, so give them some cool terrain to explore and use in the different areas. And they're also reaching places they probably never went before. So, like, my game follows traditional 4th edition, you know, storyline as to where I go straight into the Astral Sea with some things, and they go to, you know, the Abyss and places that are just, you know, insane terrain-wise. And they love it. They love exploring those things. So use cool terrains and environmental effects. And, you know, they're not fighting kobolds anymore. Like I said, they're they're fighting things that belong in these crazy areas, like demons, like angels, devils, somewhat, um, but bigger, more epic villains and monsters at this point. Take advantage of minions for 4th edition. These can be amazing because they're, they can be a threat if you don't deal with them. The minions can deal damage, they can attack, they, they can hurt you. You know, they may only take, you know, one swipe and they're gone. You have to hit them, though, to do that. So, dish out minions. You know, you picture in Lord of the Rings, you picture them, you know, wiping through with their sword, just cleaving guys left and right. Those are minions. Put them in there as some fluff, as some guys who work directly for the big boss, but use a lot of minions. And if you find minions are not working quite how you want them, they're too easy, bump them up, make them two or even three hit minions at epic tier. You know, just two or three hits takes them out instead of one. That's up to you. But use minions for sure. I'll see my notes here. Monster spawners. This is another cool one, another cool concept. Have something, and this usually will mean minions, doesn't have to, but something in the environment or some monster that's spawning more monsters. Or like, my guys at one point faced up against this giant gate that they'd opened by accident and it was unleashing demons into the place they were at. And they had to figure out how to shut this thing down or, you know, or these guys were just going to keep coming for all they knew. And so they had to find other things to do besides just straight up fight. Some of them had to hold their ground, but the others had to figure out how to shut this down which made it more of an interesting encounter than just fighting. And if they just kept fighting, more and more would keep flooding out, and eventually they would be overrun. So they knew they had to figure that out. That also puts kind of a time constraint on it, which is good as well. These things can go on forever and ever. You know how long encounters can take in 4th edition. So time constraints like a monster spawner can really help you, you know, speed up combat. Or time constraints with like environmental effects where if they're in the underdark, there's these poisonous mushroom clouds and every round they're releasing, you know, 20, 20 poison damage or 20 acid damage and each round that just picks up because the room is just filling with this gas. So 20, 25 points the next round, 30, 35. And everyone's taking this at the start of every round. They're going to try to find a way to finish that battle quick and get out of there. And that can push them, giving them that time constraint to move on out and move on with things. So that's another thing to think of during encounters, time constraints. 
multi-phase battles is another one that's really cool. You can, and this also goes with my last tip, don't give them very much rest between battles. So you can basically have two or three encounters that are connected, and they don't get a rest between because it's actually all one large encounter. Kind of like a video game could be sometimes, where you, know, you beat the guy on ground level, and he retreats up onto this balcony, and you have to follow him up there and fight him there. That's like a multi-phase battle where it starts again. Maybe he regains some health. Maybe he doesn't, but maybe he summons minions to him, and that's phase two of the battle. Make multi-phase battles because that's going to challenge them more. At Epic Tier, they're virtually invincible. They can be killed, but it's very hard if they've built their characters well. So you throw everything at them. You have to do that. So that's kind of some tips on encounters and storylines there. I will finish the third video in the series hopefully a lot sooner than two and a half months from now. And that'll be actual tips and tricks, sitting down, running a game. Um, I'm going to just show you, you know, kind of a demonstration of what, what tools I'm using how I'm running a game. I won't actually film a game. My guys aren't entirely comfortable with that yet. Hopefully I can at some point. But I'll set up a table and show you kind of how I run things so you can actually see some of it kind of in play. And if you have questions, we can go over that then. But if you do have questions, seriously, let me know. Comment here. Uh, head over to Facebook, PhD and DF Facebook. Ask me. I will answer anyone's question one-on-one. -on -one. I'm definitely not above that. So... Thanks for watching. If you have any other suggestions for videos you want to see for 4th edition, let me know. Have a good one.